Good morning, folks. Welcome to another chip break. First quick shop update. Can't really tell, but our plasma machine, gone. Sold it to Jason at Sand Hill CNC, fellow Tormach owner. Excited for it to have a new home, new life. We have a new machine coming, super excited. We bought the JD Squared 5x10, complete no-brainer. We did a video like a year ago on what we were looking for in a plasma, and they crushed it. They used clear pass servos, which caught my eye. So the whole video to come, that machine should be here at the end of the month. Super excited. We'll have it hopefully up and running or up at our open house. Um, super excited. I also bought an optical comparator. This, I will admit, was a complete fun purchase, but I made a stupid low buy it now offer. I mean, stupidly low and they accepted it. So I got an optical comparator, more to come. Those things are really cool. Um, I got to learn a little bit more on it, but it's a suburban tool. It's in great condition. Excited to have that to do some more metrology and measuring stuff. Not a lot else new or going on in the shop. Although actually, actually they're really cool. We got a Tormach 770. Really, we got it solely for our training classes because we now have the chance for you to come learn and see on either 1100, 770 or 440. Uh, actually, speaking of that, we're starting a training class today. But today's chip break, I want to talk about hiring our first employee and some mistakes or a mistake that I made. Uh, also, take a look. My desk is gone. Actually, that is my desk. My dad made that for me 10 years ago when I was in my first New York City apartment. Literally, this cutout fit the pipes in that apartment building. And it's been my daily desk for that long. And so I'm a little bit sad, but I finally moved into my, my wife calls it my big boy office. So I'm really excited. It's, uh, it's really nice in here. And it's actually, I was talking to John Grimso about it. I actually, no joke, uh, do a much better job thinking and working. And that's a really important role for me now is being able to think and brainstorm and strategize and build things. So I'm actually really glad to be in here. Um, and I was saying, John Grimms and I were talking about that on our new podcast. So we started a podcast, which really isn't a podcast. It's uh, the fact that John and I have been talking every Friday morning for half an hour. Very intimate, very raw conversation. We, we don't, uh, it's, a, it's, it's entrepreneurship therapy. We talk to each other about the real struggles, what we're doing. We talk about motivating each other. And we thought, wait, let's just share these. It should be awesome. So if you are interested, I'll put a link in the video description. Employees, what I was looking for a reason to talk about this, and this is what triggered it. So this is Modern Machine Shop. I've read it for a while. It's a free publication. You should definitely get it. It's, it's good reading. There's interesting stuff in it. But this article really caught my eye. And the, um, it's at page 18 of the March issue if you want to look up. I'll see if I can put a link in the video description. But the premise of the article was a big machine shop had 3D printing and additive capabilities for production. And the father and the son were debating when the machine wasn't running, should they seek out sort of job shop 3D printing type work? These are high-end machines, I think. And one said, no, we should say focus on production, I'm paraphrasing. The other said, yes, let's bring in money, let's keep the machine running. And it's not as easy an answer as I, I think uh, one might assume. I'd love to hear, or you guys should think about this as well. And let's extrapolate that out. And trust this ties back to our employment decision here in a second. Should you take it on? Well, the bootstrapper says, absolutely. Cash is cash. Bring in money. Keep that machine running for sure. However, there's a huge merit in saying, no, we bought this machine for a reason. We need to stay focused on that reason. We need to stay hungry. Don't get distracted. Here's how I think about that. You got to think medium term <clears throat> and here long term. What's going to happen if this business grows in which business? The production business that you bought it for originally or the job shop that you're just using to bring a few bucks in the door? What happens if that job shop stuff goes well and you then don't want to say no to it? You don't want to upset those customers. What if those job shop customers that needed the one-offs are also your other customers and you're now spurning them? You're now saying, hey, we, XYZ Machine Shop, provided you with a solution and we're now turning that off. That's not always a good thing because it kind of goes back to remember, what are you selling? You're selling a service and experience. So sometimes you're better off saying no because if you say yes and then you later say no, that made it more about you than it did about your customers. And that matters. The other question is, is it really just quick cash flow? Is it really just bring in jobs, hit go, and, and send them out the door? Well, if you're an experienced machine shop, maybe you can do that with one-off products. But if it's a new additive machine, a 3D printer type thing, 
what if it's more headache? What if it's more distractions? What if you send out bad parts? What if you end up all that stuff? And you can say that that's bad. You can also say that that's good. Good chance for you to work out the kinks. Good chance for you to learn that machine. You learn it by doing, and then you're better off suited for production. So again, it's not as clear cut as you might think. The other question that I would say is, keep asking yourself why. Why do I want the cash flow? Why, do I want the cash flow because that's what we're in the business to do is to make money? Do I want that cash flow because we're trying to justify the machine either to ourselves or if you're at a bigger company, the ROI or make the bosses happy above? Are you just bringing in cash flow to make the payments on it? One reason I really try to stay out of debt and do stay out of debt is when you motivate it by decisions that are such that I need to just make ends meet, it doesn't give you that flexibility to stay true to a vision that you want to do. You're working for the bank. You're working to make ends meet. And again, sometimes that hustle is good. Sometimes you need it. Sometimes you don't have a choice. But uh, I would say you should make the decision that's right for your long-term business nature. And hey, if that if that means having the machine off for a couple weeks while you wait to get that big production run in, more power to you. Think long-term. At the end of the day, two years, three years later, if I had brought in five or 10 grand from a week or two or something worth of work early on, may not have been a big deal relative to what we can do with that machine. So try to think, for, roll it forward, and then look back and say, would I have done that knowing now? So that has to do with employment. Here's the mistake I made. I waited until I thought the employee would be 100% fully able to be utilized. In other words, I was only willing to buy that machine, to, to make it analogous to what I, this example was, until I knew I had full revenue booked for it. Because I sat there and as an entrepreneur and a bootstrapper and I thought, well, what would he be doing or she be doing right now? And what would they be doing right now? What if there isn't work to do? And that's not the right way to think because I don't think it suits you well for what can happen with growth. And I've, a buddy of mine, uh, Instagram friend, is kind of debating this right now as well. He's thinking, should I hire my first employee? And I'm like, man, you gotta do it right now because really it takes time to find the right person. It takes time to train them up. So you gotta be thinking about six months out and he's doing what I used to do, which is he's working extra time to basically absorb that buffer, absorb that cushion, the fact that he doesn't have somebody. So he doesn't wanna hire someone so you don't realize how hard you work yourself uh, until you get that first employee and you start, it's a really important thing to, to start growing that way and go through that experience. So I was excited to share that because again, for you guys out there that have something uh, where you're bringing in some revenue, you're bringing in a product and you're thinking, man, I shouldn't be doing every little thing, packaging, every order, every machine operation. You need to be sitting there designing, thinking, doing big stuff. Don't wait as long as I did to make that first leap. Let me tell you, it was nerve wracking. I had so many decisions, it was crazy. And we're right now about to hire this week our third or fourth employee which it's not that it gets, it does get easier. Anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. Take care. See you soon.